don't pick that life, that life picks you. Welcome to Sit Down News, and before I begin, I'd like to mention our sponsor. Ratchet is a clothing company from the UK, started by a young man with a vision, a dream, and determination. They have various prints and styles for men, women, and children. I'll include a link to their website down below in the description for this video. All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about Blaze Carrazzo. Blaze is a member of the Gambino family. As I previously mentioned, both his brothers, Jojo and Nicky, are members of the family as well. Blaze is a twin. Actually, he lost his twin brother, Anthony, back in April of 2020. His brother, Anthony, had a head injury from a childhood accident that later on turned into Alzheimer's. Anthony was a jeweler. He had a spot down at Canal Street in the jewelry exchange. I used them to buy some pieces of jewelry myself. He also had some small parts in movies and TV shows. He even filmed in an episode of The Sopranos. I had met both Blaze and Anthony as a kid with my cousin Louie when we were younger, but both my parents grew up with the Carrazzos in East New York, Brooklyn. In East New York, Brooklyn, the Carrazzos hung out on Eastern Parkway. John Gotti and those guys hung out on Fulton and Rockaway. Both group of friends really didn't get along with each other back then. However, years later, they all wind up becoming part of the same family. And at one point when John Gotti becomes the boss of the family, Jojo Carrazzo is his consigliere. Also, like I mentioned in a previous video, Nikki Carrazzo at one time was slated to be the boss of the Gambino family, but an arrest prevented that from happening. My cousin Louie and I used to go to Blazers clubs years ago. One was on Fulton Street and the other one was on Jamaica Avenue. I remember the last time I went to the club on Jamaica Avenue, there was a bunch of young guys at the club like myself that Blaze had around him. One of the guys, a Puerto Rican named Jose, and let me just say he was more Italian than any Italian in that club and as dangerous as they come. As you can see, he's in a picture with Johnny Santori. Anyway, Jose broke a payphone inside the club and for some reason, Blaze blamed me. He went to Tony Muscatello and told him. Tony came to me and said, What's the matter? The payphone in Blazer's club did something to you that you had to break it? I told him I didn't do it. He asked me, well, then who broke it? I just stared at him, and then he left. He loved that I wouldn't tell him. I didn't talk to Blaze for a long time after that. I never understood why he blamed me. Back in 2013, when I was inducted into the Lucchese family, Johnny Sideburns had to officially introduce me to Blaze. And I remember that day like it was yesterday, when Johnny Sideburns did the introduction, Blaze looked like he was in shock. He took a step back. He said, well, it's about time. Congratulations. But I could tell he wasn't being sincere when he said it. A few days later, Blaze and I met alone at a bar on Cross Bay Boulevard called CJ's. Blaze was always in the place. I asked him about the bar and he told me a guy with him originally owned it and the building but sold it to a Spanish guy. So I asked him, what's he still doing here? His answer was, and I'll never forget it, I always laugh when I think about it. He said, oh, I came with the building. <laughs> we sat at the bar and had a drink. He asked me how I ended up with the Lucchese's. He said, you've been around us since you were a kid. But I explained it was through Little Joey de Benedetto. Then he said, that's right, I forgot you were close to Little Joey. Little Joey is Vic Amuso's son-in-law. Vic is the current Lucchese boss, and Joey is a member as well. But then he turned to me and he said something that, at the time, I paid no attention to, but in time I would learn the hard way. He said, those are Brooklyn guys. They're not your friends. You didn't grow up with them. Your friends are over here. Boy, was he right. After that day, I met up with Blaze quite often. A lot of guys in the life didn't really like Blaze. They called him a washwoman. And to be honest, he did talk about everybody's business. One day I remember meeting up with Ernie Grillo. Ernie at the time was an acting captain. Me and Ernie were good friends. We were in prison together as well. And when Blaze's name came up, Ernie turned around and said to me, don't ever discuss our business with him because he repeats everything he hears. But Ernie wasn't the first guy in the life to tell me that about Blaze. Even Johnny Sideburns, who actually got along pretty good with Blaze, had something to say. He told me one day, this Blaze thinks this neighborhood Howard Beach is his. He needs to realize we're here now. One day I went to go meet Blaze at a restaurant in Howard Beach called Mateo's. Mateo's is part owned by a childhood friend, Anthony Amoroso. Anthony years ago was a driver for John Gotti Jr. when John Jr. was in the life and allowed in Howard Beach. So I walk into Mateo's and Blaze is sitting at a table with about four or five guys. I say hello to everybody and I take a seat. After a while, the waiter comes over. The waiter's name is Carmine. I know the waiter because he used to work at my family's restaurant Spallini's at one time. So I'm making small talk with the guys at the table. 
I had a way to turn around and tell Blaze, remind me not to ever do a score with you and walk away. So I turn around and I look at Blaze, he looks at me and he looks away. I couldn't believe what this guy just said, so I get up, I go looking for this car mine and he's in the other room. I grab him and I tell him, let me tell you something, let that be the last time you ever fucking say something like that. Get yourself inside and go apologize to him right now. I walk away from him and I go back and take my seat at the table and about a minute later this car mine walks over and goes over to Blaze and apologizes to him. When he walked away, I turned around and told Blaze, why would you let him talk to you like that? His answer was, what are you going to do, fight with everybody? I said, Blaze, the guy's calling you a rat. He says, ah, don't let him get you crazy. Don't let him ruin your night. Blaze had an associate for many years named Jackie Scaccio. Everyone knew him as Jackie Scat. Jackie Scat had been friends with my mother and my family for over 47 years. After I walked away from the life, my mother told me that Jackie called her up one day to tell her that Blaze told him not to talk to my mother. Not only did Jackie Scat continue to talk to my mother, Jackie Scat continued to talk to me up until he passed away in Florida in a hospital. As a matter of fact, two weeks after I got straightened out in that life, meaning inducted, Jackie Scat came by my house and I was talking to him. So he turns around and he says to me, listen, I want to tell you something, be careful. So I says, be careful of what? He says, well, I talked to Blaze, he told me everything. Just be careful what you're doing out there. As far as Cousin Nostra goes, Blaze has no business telling a civilian about a guy getting straightened out, but that's why they called him a washerwoman in that life. Whenever Blaze had a meet with a Lucchese guy or have a sit down with a Lucchese guy, he would come to me and ask me about the guy, what's he like, who's his skipper and things like that, and I would tell him. Now, I wasn't doing anything against the Bagata because this goes on all the time in this life. And when you go into a sit down, you should know who you're sitting with. So in 2018, after all the treachery took place and I decided to walk away, Blaze got in touch with me and asked me to meet him in Manhattan one day. So I meet him in Midtown and the first thing he asked me for was 10 OSHA 10 cards. He needed some cards for some construction. But then he wanted to ask me about a guy, but he forgot the guy's name and said he would get back to me. At that point, I turn around and tell him, Blaze, I'm done. He says, what do you mean you're done? So I says, what do you think that means? I'm fucking done. I says, I'm done with this life. What do you think that means? So he asked me what happened and I explained everything that took place up to that point. What he said next kind of defines what the whole life is all about. First, I'll tell you the things that he didn't say. He didn't say, gee, I'm sorry to hear that. Or is there anything I could do for you or anything like that? His answer was, well, who are we going to go to if we need something from your bagata? At that point, I was of no use to Blaze anymore because I couldn't do anything for him. And that's what I think people need to understand about that life. It's basically, what could you do for me and what could I use you for? Well, just another example in a mob you never knew about. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you could do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description for this video.